Half-Life. When you think of that game series, you probably think of this. But there's more to Half-Life than just physics puzzles and action set pieces. In many ways, Half-Life is a masterclass in how to design a horror game. From the headcrabs being directly inspired by the facehuggers from Alien, to the Ravenholm area in Half-Life 2, the game has many of its roots in horror. So let's take a look at those, starting with Half-Life 1. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. The time is 8.47 a.m. While the concept of a protagonist armed to the teeth fighting creatures from another world wasn't new, Half-Life 1 took it in a new direction. Gordon Freeman isn't a trained marine. He's a scientist, meaning he's more vulnerable and must approach situations more tactically much like how you approach fights in horror games. And the more you look at the concept of Half-Life 1, the horror roots become much clearer. You start seeing parallels between Alien, The Thing, and the 1950s Alien Invasion films. In fact, Half-Life was inspired directly by Stephen King's horror novel, The Mist. Half-Life's horror goes further than just in concept, however. Design-wise, there are a lot of lessons to be learned for aspiring horror developers. For one, the jump scares are done in a very organic way that is built directly into the gameplay and story. It's never just random screamers or takes you out of the gameplay for a cutscene. Instead, it's built directly into the environment. A ceiling breaking open or a floor collapsing, turning a corner to a bunch of enemies, an elevator falling, or literal enemies that spawn with a loud sound. Okay, maybe that one is a bit cheap. But in any case, these elements, when looking through the horror lens, make for very impactful scares. And while there is an element of comedy to the game, certain interactions can be pretty creepy. Moving on to the second game and its subsequent episodes, the claustrophobic halls of Black Mesa are replaced by the post-apocalyptic streets of City 17. And while in general, things are more dystopian than specifically horror in this game, we can't talk about Half-Life 2 without talking about Ravenholm. A true masterclass in adventure horror, the Ravenholm levels of Half-Life have you worrying about multiple types of unsettling enemies that each bring unique and complementary challenges to the player. And like always, Valve's design goes above and beyond. From the pained screams of the headcrab victims when they catch fire, to the echoed proverbs of Father Grigori, to the unique and interesting physics elements you can use to fight off the hordes of zombies. And just like any true survival horror experience, the resource management and limited ammo makes each fight an uneasy encounter. And the Silent Hill and Resident Evil influence is clear in the level design and enemy encounters. Now while the Combine are clearly less traditionally scary than something like the Headcrab Zombies, enemies like the Striders and Manhacks are definitely creepy. But nothing else comes close to the Hunters. Smarter and more strategic than the Zombies, but more powerful and faster than the regular Combine. And the sound design and unnatural movements make for a truly scary enemy. If you want to see what I mean, go into a creepy forest map in Gmod and spawn one of these in. And its introduction definitely adds to its scary nature. Oh my god. And so we come to Half-Life Alex. The wait for a new Half-Life game cannot be overstated. The meme Half-Life 3 confirmed has been around since 2007, and Alex isn't even technically the third installment. And while Half-Life Alex is definitely not exclusively a horror game, seeing a headcrab jump at you in VR or frantically trying to reload before a zombie gets to you is made even more anxiety inducing in VR. VR itself has many of its roots in horror, with most of the prominent games in the early days being horror themed. And so obviously there is some bleed through. And that's not to mention,
Jeff was an entirely new type of enemy introduced in Alex, whose design is clearly inspired by the thing. He can't see, but his hearing is impeccable, and he is completely invulnerable to your attacks, meaning the best you can do to deal with him is to lure him away and hope he doesn't hear you. Well, that is until... Oh my god, Jeff, are you okay? <laughs> So, Half-Life. Not the first thing that comes to mind when you think of horror games, but the game's roots in horror and the masterfully designed horror elements should not be overlooked. So maybe the next time you're looking for a good quality scare, consider booting up Half-Life again. What did you think of this episode of The Creepy Files? Let me know in the comments and suggest what I should cover next on my Twitter or Instagram. Also follow me on Twitch because I'm hoping to do more stuff over there soon. See you all next time.